Fyodor Dostoevsky, Crime and Punishment Embark on a gripping journey that delves into the intricate workings of a tormented mind, as we explore Fyodor Dostoevsky's classic novel E Crime and Punishment. Set against the backdrop of St. Petersburg, this story follows the life of Radeon Romanovich Raskolnikov, a law student turned murderer, as he struggles with his inner demons, which push him to the brink of madness. This book summary sheds light on Raskolnikov's self-destructive thought patterns, moral dilemmas, and tormented relationships with the individuals around him. Featuring some of the key themes such as poverty, social alienation, ethics, and the impact of choices on the human psyche, this compelling narrative provides a stimulating and thought-provoking reading experience. The Tragic Descent of Raskolnikov In Fyodor Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, impoverished and desperate law student Raskolnikov develops the theory of the Superman, justifying the murder of the corrupt pawnbroker Aliona Ivanovna for the greater good. However, during the violent act, Raskolnikov also kills Aliona's innocent sister, Lizaveta, and is left to grapple with the consequences of his heinous actions. In addition, the impending marriage of his sister Dunia to a repulsive man sends Raskolnikov into a frenzy of disgust and self-loathing. This captivating passage explores the complex psyche of a man driven to commit murder, as well as the aftermath of his crime and his eventual path to redemption. Raskolnikov's Paranoia Raskolnikov's guilt and paranoia escalate as he spirals into a feverish delirium and fears being caught for the murders of Aliona and Lizaveta. He becomes increasingly erratic, hiding the stolen goods and contemplating suicide before encountering Marmoladov's family and Sonia. Raskolnikov confides in Zaimtov but ultimately decides to confess to the police. Raskolnikov's Turmoil Polcheria and Dunia are concerned about Raskolnikov's mental state, but Zosimov assures them that he is recovering. The women inform him of Marfa's sudden death, and Razumihin escorts them home. Dunia receives a letter from Luzin requesting a meeting without Raskolnikov. The next day, Polcheria and Dunia visit Raskolnikov, who is remorseful about concealing his crime from his family. He asks Dunia to choose between him and Luzin but agrees to attend her meeting with Luzin. Sonia invites Raskolnikov to her father's funeral, and he asks Razumihin to take him to see Porfiry. Porfiry reveals that Raskolnikov is the last of Aliona's customers to come forward. He also asks about Raskolnikov's essay, in which he explains his theory that there are exceptional and ordinary men, and exceptional men are entitled to commit crimes for a greater good. Porfiry tries to trick Raskolnikov into confessing to the murder but fails. Raskolnikov's Consequences Raskolnikov's guilt for his misdeeds and strange encounters with Svidrigailov bring him a restless mind full of doubt and self-discovery, leading to a parting of ways with his family and a pivotal conversation with Sonia, as Porfiry's investigation takes a surprising turn. Raskolnikov is consumed by his guilt and decides to revisit the crime scene to check for any evidence left behind, where he is confronted by a stranger calling him a murderer. Defending himself, Raskolnikov asserts that he killed a principal, not a person. Amidst his restlessness, his dreams of striking Aliona with an axe come haunting but with an unexpected twist, she laughs and refuses to die. Enter Svidrigailov, who appears uninvited in Raskolnikov's bedroom and desires to speak to Dunia, despite her family's dislike for him. The conversation turns uncomfortable when Raskolnikov accuses Svidrigailov of murdering his wife, and Svidrigailov admits to seeing a resemblance between himself and Raskolnikov. Offering Dunia a large sum of money to bring an end to her engagement with Luzin, Svidrigailov pleads with Raskolnikov to communicate this to his sister. At a gathering of Polcheria, Dunia, Luzin, and Raskolnikov, Dunia breaks engagement with Luzin after his attempts to slander Raskolnikov's benevolent gesture towards Sonia. Raskolnikov discloses Svidrigailov's offer to Dunia but then suddenly decides that it's best that they all part ways. Raskolnikov's sudden change in attitude towards his family perplexes them. Raskolnikov seeks solace in Sonia and provokes her for her devout faith. 
He asks her to read to him the Lazarus section of the Bible and promises to confess the truth about Lizavita's murder on his next visit. Little does he know that Svidrigailov has rented the room next to Sonia's, where he overhears their conversation. The following day, Raskolnikov decides to submit himself to formal questioning by Porphyry, who tries to get him to confess using psychological analyses but fails. An unexpected twist comes when two men confess to the murders of Aliona and Lizavita. The Downward Spiral of Luzin Luzin's false generosity, accompanied by his accusations of Sonia's theft, ultimately lead to his downfall. Lebeziatnikov proves Sonia's innocence, which emotionally overwhelms her. Meanwhile, Katerina's behavior spirals out of control, leading to the eviction of the Marmoladovs. Raskolnikov confesses his crime to Sonia but refuses to follow her advice on seeking forgiveness. Sonia learns of her family's precarious situation and is forced to witness her stepmother's tragic death. In the end, Svidrigailov offers to help Sonia's step-siblings. Raskolnikov also confronts Svidrigailov, realizing that he knows of his crime. Raskolnikov's Confession After Porfiry tells Raskolnikov that he knows he is the murderer, he doesn't arrest him but advises him to confess. Meanwhile, Raskolnikov tries to protect his sister from Svidrigailov, who reveals his dark past and attempts to blackmail her. However, Dunya manages to defend herself and accuses Svidrigailov of poisoning Marfa. Svidrigailov leaves and gives his bonds to Sonia before committing suicide. Raskolnikov visits his family and asks for forgiveness before ultimately confessing to the police. Raskolnikov's Redemption After being sentenced to eight years in prison in Siberia, Raskolnikov becomes miserable and harsh with Sonia and his fellow inmates. However, Sonia's love and care eventually lead to his redemption, and they weep together for the new life ahead of them. Raskolnikov finally faces the consequences of his actions as he is sentenced to eight years in Siberia. At first, he is miserable and takes out his frustration on Sonia and his fellow inmates. Despite this, Sonia continues to visit him regularly, and he slowly opens up to her love and care. One day, when Sonia is unable to visit, Raskolnikov begins to worry about her, realizing the depth of his feelings for her. When she finally returns, he breaks down in tears and throws himself at her feet. Their love and shared experiences renew them both, bringing a bright dawn of a new future. Raskolnikov finally understands that the suffering he endured was the price to be paid for a new, happy life. The other convicts notice a change in him, and he knows that his redemption was possible because of Sonia's love and support. Together, they weep for the joy and suffering that lay ahead. Crime, Punishment, and Society Crime and Punishment is a socially critical novel that explores the demise of traditional Russian values and exposes the costs of extreme inequality through vivid character portraits and philosophical musings. Crime and Punishment is not your typical crime novel. Instead, it delves into the psychology of a disillusioned student named Raskolnikov and his moral dilemma. Dostoevsky wrote the novel in a realistic style, and through Raskolnikov, he represents the superfluous man, a character that can't find his place in society. The text is politically charged and encapsulates Dostoevsky's criticisms of Russian progressivism. He believed that education was making the elites nihilistic, estranged, and ruthless from traditional Russian values, Christian principles, and the peasant class. Furthermore, Dostoevsky uses Luzin's character to lambast social climbers' ambitions, and the socialist Lebeziatnikov to expose the hypocritical radical intelligentsia. In Crime and Punishment, the narration is third-person omniscient, and the novel is written in a realistic style. There are mundane and gritty details, and Dostoevsky peppers the story with real locations in and around St. Petersburg. Although characters are fictional, the challenges they face are real, reflecting late 19th-century societal struggles of the average Russian. One of the book's most notable themes is Raskolnikov's questioning of commonly accepted morals, which is partly why crime and punishment is a precursor to existentialism. 
The idea behind existentialism, a philosophical stance later developed by a diverse array of 19th and 20th century thinkers, including Nietzsche and Camus, is that there's no inherent meaning to life, and people create their own meaning. Finally, Dostoevsky's use of dashes and ellipses to express internal thoughts highlights a fractured consciousness that conveys the protagonist's psychological astuteness. The tone is anxious, moody, and claustrophobic, though the text offers flashes of dark humor and tenderness. Overall, Crime and Punishment is a socially critical novel that exposes the costs of extreme inequality and explores the demise of traditional Russian values. Through vivid character portraits and philosophical musings, Dostoevsky's masterpiece is a must-read for anyone who seeks to understand human behavior and societal failures. Modernization of Russia Russia's history of isolation, serfdom, and autocratic rule changed when Tsar Peter the Great introduced westernization in the 18th century. Despite the primarily rural economy, modernization brought some industrialization, such as the national rail system and growth in cities. With the emergence of a cosmopolitan and radical elite, serfdom continued until its emancipation in 1861. The table of ranks, organized by birth, wealth, and service to the Tsar, allowed non-hereditary office holders to join the nobility. This class stratification led to extreme division between peasants and the small class of landed gentry. Dostoevsky's Contradictions Dostoevsky's work embodies romanticism, nihilism, and socialism as well as his idiosyncratic beliefs, including criticism of serfdom, deplored moral degradation, and questioning the existence of God. He was a traditional imperialist and pacifist who didn't support the abolition of Tsardom but was a Christian. Crime and Punishment's Influence Crime and Punishment's impact reaches beyond literature, inspiring fields such as philosophy and psychoanalysis. The novel's popularity continues, with adaptations in film and television, and even receiving praise from Alfred Hitchcock who refused to recreate it. Sigmund Freud was a big admirer of the novel's success upon publication, and its translation widened its reach to a global audience. Despite numerous adaptations, none have achieved independent acclaim, cementing the novel's lasting impact in the literary world and beyond. In conclusion, The Journey Through Crime and Punishment takes us deep into the psychological turmoil and ethical ramifications of Raskolnikov's actions, immersing us in a thrilling tale of self-destructive obsession, moral questioning, and eventual redemption. Dostoevsky masterfully challenges our perspective on humanity, societal norms, and the consequences of our choices, leaving readers contemplating the value of compassion, forgiveness, and self-sacrifice. As the story unfolds, there is a sense of inevitability as Raskolnikov's actions culminate in his ultimate confrontation with the consequences he has set into motion. This book summary encapsulates the essence of Dostoevsky's mastery in presenting an immersive, powerful, and thought-provoking exploration of the human condition.